Hello, my YouTube family. I've got another message to bring to you from Lynn Johnson, and I'm going to read it right off of uh, 444 Prophecy News. It is on Grafted in Team Jesus, but they have music going to it, and it's hard for me to concentrate, and I'm not sure that you will hear me over the music, so i got to read it off of this where I tell you, you know, be careful when you go to 444 Prophecy News. They're not always of the Lord, so you have to have discernment. Or just get them from people who have it and know when they're not right. Okay, so this one's called, Be Ready, Now is the Time. Remember the last one was, uh, now is, um, oh, had to be, uh, had the word now in it. Almost the same kind of title, but this one's Be Ready, Now is the Time by Lynn Johnson, posted by 444 Prophecy News, 2021, July 14. And the picture has a hand up, and it says, This is your time to do exploits, wonders, healings, and more as you bring in my lost sheep. To my kingdom of glory. Okay, be ready. Now is the time. July 14th, Lynn Johnson. Word received February 11th, 2021, at 2 34 a.m. My children, now that's February, March, April, May, June, July, five months ago. Be ready for your anointed, your anointing comes without warning. All things have changed. Nothing will be the same as this age ends. And my kingdom of glory begins. Oh, hallelujah. The harvest of souls is here. The time is short to do your mission. Wait for your anointing and then your instructions from me. Listen for my voice and follow my guidance. Once again, do not lean on your own understanding. I expect complete obedience from my warriors of faith. Nothing less. This is your time to do exploits, wonders, healings, and more as you bring in my lost sheep to my kingdom of glory. Again, I say, be ready. Repent of any sins when they happen immediately as only those with pure hearts will be anointed. Do not miss your time to shine in the most momentous time of this age. When the last of my lost sheep have chosen the kingdom of glory, then you will be brought to me. I await you with love. All of heaven is awaiting your arrival with great excitement. All is ready for you, my beloved children. Great joy as you have never experienced before. Stand tall. Be resolute. Be ready. Now is the time. Clearly, they don't. Jesus does not give the whole picture in this because um, it says the time is short to do your mission. Wait. For your anointing and then your instructions from me. It doesn't say, at this point you will receive your glorified bodies where nothing can harm you. And it should, but it doesn't. Once again, do not lean on your own understanding. I, complete, I expect complete obedience. Okay, so understand, we will not do great exploits, wonders, and healings until we get our glorified bodies. We have to go outside of time to get that and then come back. Because there's no way this body is going to go out and do very much for the Lord. 
and I know lots of people who are in that are convinced they know they heard from the Lord they got dreams visions messages whatever however the Lord chose to tell them that they are part of the first fruits harvest and they will do great exploits for the Lord there's a, there's 144,000 give or take we don't know if that's an exact number but there are two groups of 144,000 you can go on uh, let's see what's grafted in Team Jesus their website teamjesus222.com look at their list of videos recent videos and uh, you can find out so much more okay you may not agree with everything but I don't agree with everything we can fellowship as long as we are on the same page about gospel the the truths of the Bible uh, the fact that there are two uh, raptures or leaving outside of time we come back we help those who got left behind there's the multitude too large to number goes into heaven at the sixth seal I mean that's biblical you can't have a group you cannot the Bible says two cannot walk side by side if they're not in agreement how can two get married or form a business or whatever have a ministry if they don't all agree on the major portions of it like prophecy and whether you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit or not these are important things okay all right the verses here um, it says great joys you have never experienced before stand tall be resolute be ready now is the time so just keep in mind that even though many messages are exciting they're encouraging they don't have all the facts because Jesus chooses to give us this one a puzzle piece that one a puzzle piece that's why we have to fellowship to get them all together to understand the picture the whole picture and I don't even think we'll understand the whole picture until we're already there okay it's signed your King Yeshua your Redeemer Messiah be ready now is the time scripture given mark 1 17 new king james version then jesus said to them follow me and i will make you fishers of men acts 1 8 new king james version but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem and in all of judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth Acts 1.21, New King James Version. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 2 Thessalonians 2.13, New King James. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth so many people think they believe in the truth and they don't know the truth but Jesus says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free how are you going to know the truth if you're not filled with the Spirit or at least asking Jesus give me a new uh, fresh anointing from your Holy Spirit before I start reading my Bible so I'll have him to help teach me what I need to learn in Jesus name I pray something like that saying you want more you want more you want to be filled it's like being at a banquet right and when you first get there they hand you a little plate and you can put several items a spoonful on a little plate and you go sit down and eat that and you see some people got big old platters and they're heaped full of all kind of meats and this and that you want more you want what they got that's how it should be you should want you you have 
a wealth of information in a Bible. There is a wealth of information. But to get the platter full, you need to go to something like blueletterbible.org or see what's the one Kathy uses. A lot of people can't remember. Uh, anyway, you, you can ask around, but for sure, Blue Letter Bible, and you don't have to pay anything. They do ask for donations. It's a huge, wonderful site. So let's say you want to study First, Second Thessalonians 2. That's a good one to start with. And say you're reading, you go down to verse uh, whatever, maybe this one, and you want to know what does it mean to, uh sanctification by the Spirit. What does he mean by that? So when you go to blueletterbible.org and you type in the little search box, it's really little, about in the middle, put in two, T-H-E-S-S, -S, another two, colon, 13, or you could just put in a two for chapter two. Hit the little arrow at the side and you can drop down where it says KJV, click on that, and it'll drop down all the many, 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 many versions they have. Pick the version you want. You might want NKJV. You might want, uh, I use NASB 95. Uh, they do have an updated version, but I'm afraid of updated versions. <sighs> Satan's got his hand in the Bible everywhere you go, which why is why it helps to know to go to the the Hebrew and the Greek. New Testament is Greek, Old Testament is Hebrew. You go to the left, you click on tools. Now, underneath the verse itself, you'll get a drop down where every letter or maybe a phrase comes with a number. You click on the number and it'll tell you all the different meanings for that number, like sanctification. What does this mean? And to be made holy, to be cleansed, to be cleaned, whatever. And that will teach you the further English meanings of that word or that number that was put to the Greek word. That was in the Bible to begin with. If you delve high enough, far enough, deep enough, you can find the Aramaic version. Because Kathy uses that a lot. Well, she's used it quite a bit. And that's how we found out that at the when the ten virgins were waiting on the bridegroom. In the parable of the ten virgins, they weren't waiting for the bridegroom. The ten virgins are the left behind. They've now got cleaned up. They're now holy. They're dressed right. They're waiting on Jesus to come. But no, that word means bride and groom. Bride and groom. The word, the Aramaic and it got messed with and they turned it into bridegroom to make it look like these are the pre-trib people. Why did five get left behind? Why would five get left behind? They were dressed right, waiting on Jesus, believing in him as their master. They even, after they had to go buy more oil, they came back. Oh, they've all gone in. Let's go. And they knew where it was. They pounded on the door. Master, Master, let us in. We're here now. They knew who he was. He was their master. He said, Truly I say unto you, I do not know you. Why didn't he know them? They were able to buy oil, weren't they? They were able to buy oil. Think about it. How can you buy and sell in the future? I will move on. Romans 8.30 Moreover, who he, that's Jesus, predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. 
Now this verse, I don't like this verse. I think it's been messed with. I'll tell you why. This says to me that some of us were chosen from before time began, before God made man. He knew that me and 143 other, 143, 143,999 people were going to be chosen. They were already chosen to be the bride of Christ. Didn't matter how we were going to live. We were them. No, that's not right. Because if you think you're one of them and you're living like the world, you're living in the world, doing what you want, living like you want, you're you rarely give God a time of day. You don't sacrifice for him. Do you ever fast? Have you ever fasted? Yet you think you're predestined? That's Calvinism. To believe that everybody who goes to one of those churches gets told, You were predestinated to be here. You belong to Jesus no matter what you do. Now, come on. Common sense tells us that can't possibly be. Okay? If this group over here, this small remnant that's going versus this huge multitude too large to number gets left behind, or doesn't go until later. Why? There has to be a why. Because this little group over here got filled with the Spirit, followed Jesus wherever he went. That's metaphorically. He's in our life. We put him first. We love him more than our spouses and children and pets. We love him more than our beautiful houses. We love him more than our jobs and careers. If they try to make us work on Sunday, we tell them no. Back when it was good to go to church, people should have said no. I go to church on Sunday. Nowadays, it's Jesus is telling people to come out of her, my people. Stop going to those churches. Why? The preachers are the shepherds of their flocks. And they are letting them down. And they are telling them it's okay Gosh, it's hard to preach on here. You know what I'm saying? That it's okay to take certain medications that we shouldn't take. Let's just put it that way. Gosh, this is rough. Okay, I hope you know what I mean can't talk about it on YouTube. I cannot. So I'm going to end it here. I plead the blood of Jesus over this message and my little bit of additions. And I pray it stays up. And the devil keeps his hands off of it. There's nothing wrong with it. I didn't say anything. I didn't give anybody medical advice. So you better leave it alone, Satan. Keep your hands off my videos and stop taking them down for no good reason. I declare it in Jesus' name. And I pray somebody gets something out of this. And feel free to leave your comments for crying out loud. Let's fellowship with one another. That's what comments are for. If you say something, somebody else comes along that you should read their comment and comment to them. Unless you don't have anything nice to say about it, then just leave it alone. But that's, where do you fellowship? Do you actually have for real people to fellowship with? I hope you do, even if it's online. If you still have a Facebook group, are they all thinking like you? Or are you just there to socialize? There's a difference. Socializing is of the world. You need a group that thinks the way you're supposed to think. That we're in the end days. We are in the end days. We are already in tribulation. Don't think we're not. And then you had better not take the medicine they want you to take. I gotta shut up. 
I love you all. God bless you. Bye for now.